Hello everybody, you're watching The Political Vigilante. My name is Graham Elwood. A uh, great way to support the show is to go to patreon.com slash Graham Elwood where you can submit articles like Tim Stack has done. Tim Stack has been supporting the show since day one. Tim, very much appreciated. Oh, when will Americans realize we're not the good guys? This was an op-ed piece that was in truthdig.com. Truth, the link is in the show notes below. I love Truth Dig. They do good stuff there. Lee Camp is a contributing writer there. Um, Chris Hedges writes there. They do they do a lot of really good stuff. And this really goes into the breakdown here, especially as we are ramping into another war with Iran. We've been trying to get to war with Iran since they deposed the Shah in 1979. About, and this is a valuable thing. I don't think a lot of Americans realize because the corporate media talks about, oh, we got these evil dictators in all these countries, and no one's talking about all the evil stuff we're doing. All the bombs we've dropped, all the ruined, the lives we've killed, and families we've ruined, and, and schools, and everything that we've just destroyed for profit, for oil, for power, for resources. Like, we keep thinking we're, we're, the, we're the liberators from World War II. We're, we're not, it hasn't been that in a long time. I mean, literally, World War II. I mean, just about everywhere else, we've gone where we shouldn't have been. This author talks about it. He's like, because he's older, and he's like, can you imagine in the 70s, if you would have told people in the 70s that in you know, 30, 40 years, America would be in war all over the place. <laughs> it's crazy. This is, a, but first there's this, there's this um, article from the New York Times where it says this, talking about Tehran. American intelligence and military officers are working on additional clandestine plans to counter Iranian aggression in the Persian Gulf. Pushed by the White House to develop new options that could help deter Tehran without escalating tensions into a full-out conventional war, according to a current and former officials. And this is the point that this, that this author brings up. When it comes to Washington's never-ending war on terror, that one phrase you're not likely to find in such media coverage will be American aggression. It's always Iranian aggression. What? We've surrounded... Iran with bases. We have Iraq and Afghanistan on either side and we're just like waiting to swallow them up. This is what we do. It's like, and not to excuse any of the stuff that the Iranian government has ever done, any of their aggressive moves or any of the things they've done against their own citizens, not excusing any of that, but we just push people and push people. Again, I'm not excusing what the Chinese government has done, but when we do military uh, naval maneuvers in the sea of, in the, you know the sea of Japan like right off their shore what would we, what, how would we do that how would we respond if the Chinese or Iranian Navy was you know 25 30 miles off the shore coast of California here we're just tooling around in the Gulf of Mexico come on. Come on. Oh, Mexico's one of our allies. We're just helping them out. Can you? There's no way we would tolerate that. We almost went to World War III because Russia was sending ships to Cuba back in the 60s. It was the Cuban Missile Crisis. That's the closest anyone's ever gotten with their Navy to our shores. And yet we do this crap off everybody's shores all the time. We flex our muscles and then we wonder why they act with aggression. And then let's look at our history, right? Let's look at our history. Saddam Hussein, specific to Iran, right? So let's, let's go back. So in 1953, Mossadegh was, was a democratically elected leaguer. He said he was going to nationalize the oil. We said no. The CIA got him out. We put in the Shah of Iran, who was a brutal dictator for 20 years. Shah gets thrown out because... Under the Shah's brutal dictatorship, it helped fundamental uh, Islam flourish. The Ayatollah was a young man who saw the Shah torture like family members. That's how he got radicalized. We helped create that guy. We helped create radical, fundamentalist, violent Islam. We helped create that, right? 
So then when the Shah is thrown out by the Ayatollah and there's the uh, hostage crisis, they take the embassy and hold them hostage. We then back Saddam Hussein in the Iraq-Iran war. Now we're said we're really like can't use chemical weapons. You can't chemical weapons are bad. You right? Syria Assad used them against his own people. Saddam Hussein used has them used them whatever. Oh wait, Saddam, his use of chemical weapons against Iranian troop concentrations that American military intelligence helped him target. We helped Saddam use chemical weapons in the eighties against Iran. How are we the good guys again? The American media never says American aggression. Look what we've done. And look where we are today. U.S. Special Operations Forces deployed to 149 countries in 2017. That's approximately 75% of the world we deployed our military to. Anybody deploy their army on our soil? If Russia or China was doing that, we would be outraged. If Iran was doing that, is Iran sending their troops to over to 75% of the world? Again, not excusing anything bad that they've done, but look what we do. We think we're so great. We have perhaps 800 military garrisons. 800 bases over 75% of the world. U.S. Navy patrols most of its oceans and seas on which U.S. Un unmanned aerial drones conduct assassination strikes across a surprising range of countries. Our drones do that. We flew one probably into Iranian airspace and they shot it down and we claim, oh, it wasn't. It was just a surveillance drone. What? There's kids in the Middle East who are growing up with PTSD from the sound of our drones. That's the United States. We're not dropping candy bars and American flags. We're not dropping school books. We're not dropping medical supplies. We're dropping death. One of the reasons I got an electric car was every time I was filling up my gas car, I felt like I was pouring blood in the tank because that's what we have to get to get oil. We can kill staggering numbers of civilians, destroy cities, uproot populations, create hordes of refugees with our never ending wars across great Mi Middle East and Africa. And then we blame the refugees that we created. How dare they want to come here after we blew up their country? America needs to wake up. Share this with your friends. Show them the stats. People in other parts of the world view us as the evil bad guy because we are. We're the only ones doing this. We outspend the next 10 countries combined with our military. Again, okay? I'm not excusing any aggressive stuff Russia has done, is doing. Same thing with China. But we're the worst. And we're helping. If we weren't so aggressive, would these countries be that aggressive? I doubt it. If we came with peace and we said we want to help, we have, we're the richest country in the history of the world. We've taken care of all of our American citizens. There's no more homeless people. We have free college tuition. We have the cleanest drinking water in the world. We have Medicare for all. We have $15 because we have a Green New Deal. We put every American to work because we're going to save the planet. And we want to bring that to your country. Do you think they would be aggressive with us? You think they'd want to blow us up? If we said we're going to lead the way with peace and saving the planet with a Green New Deal because we have limited time. Some people say 20 years, some people say 10, some people say 5, some people say 2. No point in getting into an argument over which scientist is right, but we all know the time is limited. Be it 2 or 20 years, our time is limited. And America should be leading the world on saving the human race with peace. America could be this benevolent, like father, grandfather, parent, grandmother, mother, like come, we can take care of you. Like Lady Liberty, we'll take care of you. Give me your sick, your tired, your poor. We're going to fix and save the world. And we could be this beacon of hope for the whole world. Not people don't need to come here 
we could spread it. We could not spread our bombs and our terror and our horror and our greed, but spread our, our like, the idea of America, in my opinion, is perfect. The Constitution, the Bill of Rights, these are brilliant political documents. We could be spreading this everywhere. We need to start here in America. We're a sick country. We're like a country of abused people. We're abusers and abused and we are in denial about how awful we are. And we could be the light that shined the way for the rest of the world. But we gotta wake up to the realities of who we are first. We gotta admit the fact that this country is founded on genocide and slavery and fix that and take care of our own people and then get to work on saving the planet and get the whole world to join us. That's my view of the world. You're watching The Political Vigilante. Support me at rockfin.com slash Graham Elwood, patreon.com slash Graham Elwood, and join Ron Placone and I on the road for all of our tour dates. We're going to Vegas July 27th. We're in, um, in September. We're in the middle of the country. We're going to Omaha, Sioux Falls, Madison, Minneapolis, and Iowa City. Go to grandma.com for all my tour dates. Thanks for watching.